We're coming to you now from the Destiny module in the International Space Station, where Hewlett-Packard Enterprise is conducting an experiment to prove that high-performance compute with the latest technologies can be deployed quickly and efficiently in order to enable the scientists and explorers to survive in deep space missions. I'm joined by my colleague, Dr. Ben Bennett, who is the Director of High-Performance Compute Strategy. What are we doing in this whole program, Ben? So what we're doing is we're taking commodity off-the-shelf hardware yeah. and we are running a piece of autonomous software across it that manages failure. We're processing data and providing information. There is no two-way link to the space station. Right. We're just getting information back. We're processing on the ultimate edge. Now you just said something. You're saying managing failure. What do you mean by that? NASA spends a lot of money as do satellite providers, as do car manufacturers to build systems that don't fail. It's expensive. The economics for very large government supercomputers mean that you can't build systems that don't fail. Right. You build systems that you understand how they fail and you manage the failure so it's not visible to the user's applications. And that's what we mean by fail safely. The applications continue to run while the systems underneath deal with bit errors, fan mm -hmm. problems, mm -hmm. power supply problems. Mm -hmm. So to the user, the system is always there. To the system administrator, mm -hmm. it stops him running around like a headless chicken moving parts. Yeah, now this really changes the way NASA approaches kind of a, a, com a compute system or a technology system where they're spending a lot of money to make sure it doesn't fail. And what we're doing is we're showing them that it's possible for them from an economy of scale perspective to actually be ready to handle failure in certain circumstances gracefully without impacting or putting anything at risk with the mission, correct? Absolutely, what we're taking is NASA's learnings of their very large supercomputers, mm -hmm. and we, we supply NASA with very large supercomputers on Earth, and it's the information about these systems that we are now applying that to space. This is a conversation had by our HPC CTO, Dr. Eng Lim, and Rupak Viswas, who runs all of the IT within NASA Ames, to take the Earth-bound experience mm -hmm. and to put those laws of economics into space. So it just, just changes the whole investment envelope and what's possible. Now this is particularly important in the mission to Mars to be able to have people have this kind of compute capability on the deep, deeper space missions. Uh, kind of compute capability today and being able to share information from the station itself to the planets, uh, planet Earth. Not so complicated communications right there, but I think, was it like a 24 minute window of communication in one direction, yes. uh, you know, deep in Mars? So it would be almost the better part of an hour if you were trying to do any kind of computational activity. So obviously not a desired state. It's going to change how you do interactive computing. Mm -hmm. In supercomputers today, we do batch processing. So you get your code, you submit it, you get your results the next day. So we're taking that supercomputing science ideas and we're doing that and taking it to Mars. As you say, 24 minutes one way, and that's at its closest point. What, what you're seeing is, is that that actual period of time changes. 24 minutes is the shortest time. Right. And you can't therefore have a situation where you have to get information based on data from Earth. All the existing satellite systems that NASA are running today with manned crews, all of the data goes to Earth, it gets processed, the people on the Earth extract the information, and then talk to the satellite. And that's just not going to work on this mission. Not page. going to yeah. work. Well, it's super exciting. Now, how long have we been flying? We've been flying 198 days. 198 days. And it's been powered on, mm -hmm. continuously running, for 167 days. And it's a one year stress test. One year, so we've got 188 and then, days then left. Gonna, yeah. And then we're going to bring it back on CRS 18 in November. Yep. Ben, thank Norman. you, sir. Appreciate it.